The Benzie Conservation District is working to stop the spread of destructive plants and animals in the region's lakes and streams. Recently, we joined Jane Perino, the district's program coordinator, for a short discussion with her mentor, Dr. Joe Lattimore. Lattimore is an aquatic ecologist with Michigan State University and a statewide leader in efforts to control the spread of aquatic invasive species. Thank you for joining us at Nature Change. I am Jane Perino, the Aquatic Invasive Species Coordinator at the Benzie Conservation District. And joining me today is Jo Lattimore of Michigan State University. She is an aquatic invasive species expert and outreach specialist taking their mobile team all throughout the state of Michigan to perform boat decontamination at public launches. So Joe, we invited you here today to talk about the issue of aquatic invasive species in the state of Michigan, and particularly the transfer of species through recreational boating activities. Um, I wanted to start out by asking you what your perception of the water quality in general is in this region. You know, there's problems everywhere, of course, um, but there's also a reason why people love to travel to this part of the state. Our water's in really good shape in general overall, um, and a lot of the sources of invasive species in, sp in particular are, you know, more southerly. We're getting uh, right. species that move up from the southern states um, in a lot of different ways. And up here, we're still kind of um, protected or they just haven't reached us yet, right. uh, which, is, which is great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, why are aquatic invasive species such a big deal? Um, might seem like an obvious question, but I think it's worth asking. Oh, it absolutely is. They're, they're a huge deal. Invasive species like milfoil can uh, really interfere with recreation and people's enjoyment of their lakes. Um, they can decrease property values. Um, and then they're also a, a harm to the environment. They're competing with our native species of, of plants and animals. Um, and you know, we're not just talking about plants here as well. It's something to keep in mind. There's also different kinds of mussels. I mean, most people have heard of zebra mussels, of course. We have quagga mussels, and there's invasive crayfish. And unfortunately, yeah. there's a whole suite of, of different kinds of species that are trying to make their way uh, into our waters and can really cause some, some real damaging effects. And so what we want to do is stay ahead of that. Yeah. And and you know, raise awareness uh, among the public of these risks and how um, they can take simple steps to uh, help prevent their invasion. What are, in your opinion, some of the species of most concern in the state of Michigan and why? Oh, yeah. Um, most of them are plants, especially the ones that I'm dealing with. And one of the reasons why we're really concerned about plants is that they can kind of sneak in to mm -hmm. lakes and rivers unnoticed, especially mm -hmm. these plants like milfoil that grow beneath the surface. It's not obvious. Like mm -hmm. if you have something uh, that grows right on the surface and floats and has big flowers, something like a water hyacinth, um, mm -hmm. which is potentially invasive. Um, <clears throat> we uh, will notice them, right? People who right. live on the lake or use the lake will notice them. Uh, but these underwater submerged plants can be kind of devious. You don't know they're there. And in fact, we often have native plants that look very much like them. And so they might not even go notice until we have acres and acres of them. Um, starry stonewort is another um, plant that we're concerned about. It's actually an algae, but it can grow really thick uh, and weedy up to you know eight feet or more uh, in a deeper waterway. And um, at this point, we're still mainly seeing it in southern Michigan um, and central Michigan, and we don't see it much up in this part of the state yet, but mm -hmm. um, it may just be a matter of time because it too can be spread um, through boating and, and other means. So mm -hmm. um, that's another one we're definitely concerned about. What is important to remember when participating in boat decontamination? Um, what makes it effective? And also, what are some other methods of preventing the spread of aquatic invasives? Oh, yeah. There's one of the great things about boat decontamination is it's not as complex as it sounds, right? It sounds like, you know, you think about decontamination, that you right. think of hazmat suits and <laughs> chemical cleansers and all that kind of stuff. Um, luckily for, for our boating public, it's, it's really a lot easier than that. Mm -hmm. um, we, we emphasize clean, drain, and dry. Uh, that's kind of our slogan that we try and get boaters to remember. And that is, you know, cleaning off your boat and trailer and any boating gear that you have um, before you launch and also before you depart um, so you're not uh, spreading anything. And that can be if you have access to a, a power washer system, whether it's a mobile one like you and I work with mm -hmm. or a permanent station or even a car wash, a pressure car wash in the area you can use 
to wash down your, your equipment uh, to make sure you're not spreading things. Um, then draining is the other um, second step, and that's you know if you have live wells, bait buckets, mm -hmm. things like that, where you may be transporting water from a water body, you don't want to move that water from one lake to another, for example, because there could be you know mussel larvae, plant mm -hmm. fragments, the disease uh, uh, mm -hmm. option that you mentioned, that could all be contained in there. So you want to drain everything out and not move water. And then finally, drying. That's the simplest step of all. You know, you can wipe down uh, with a small towel that you keep on your boat, um, wipe things down, um, and even just letting gear dry for a few days. Um, even if you don't have the, the equipment to power wash it, just letting things dry for a few days. Um, and that applies to things like waders and boots as well mm -hmm. as boats and trailers mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. If you let things dry, most things can't survive more than right. a few days out of the water. And so those are um, all that clean, drain, and dry sequence is pretty easy and inexpensive mm -hmm. to, to achieve. So when a water body is clearly infested with an aquatic invasive species, what, are, what can a group do, what can the residents do to deal with it? Mm -hmm. That's a great question um, because it's happening all over mm -hmm. Michigan and elsewhere. Um, and it really, it, in some ways, depends on what species you're dealing with. Sure. Um, sure. There's management options that are known for a number of species. For other species, we really don't have a good treatment um, mm -hmm. a process known. Zebra mussels is one of those challenges that's the subject of lots of research, yeah. but we still don't have a, a cut and dried solution to that. It's something that we know will work. If you get zebra mussels in your lake, you can do this and it'll fix it. Right. Um, again, that points to why prevention is so important. Um, but in a more general sense, um, if a community discovers something that they suspect to be an invasive species, one of the first steps to do is to contact someone, right. either locally at a conservation district or at the state level, DNR, DEQ, um, to um, report it and say, mm -hmm. here's what we're seeing. Can you confirm for us what we're dealing with? Because that's very important, is knowing what you're dealing with and if it's actually an invasive species. And then once you know what you're dealing with, um, then it's looking at what your management options are, which could be anything from hand removal of a small infestation um, to uh, there's mechanical means of, of removing, especially plants. There's herbicides available that can help. Um, there's a, a whole suite of different kinds of treatments there, but you know, all of them take a lot of time. All right. of them are expensive, and none of them guarantee success. So right, again, it's an ongoing process, yes, yes. basically. Um, full eradication might not happen. So where all do you work in your program? We're in Leelanau, Benzie, and Manistee counties, and um, work a couple of our watersheds have headwaters in Grand Traverse County, mm -hmm. so those waters are relevant, but we're hoping to expand into Grand Traverse in the near future. Right, right. Yeah. So we're both really dependent on um, that local contact and getting local Absolutely. people volunteering yeah. to help out because I know with our program and likely with yours too, you know, it's one thing for us to show up at a boat launch right. and start talking to boaters <laughs> and telling them, you know, you, you really need to be clean, cleaning, draining, and drying. Right. Um, but if you have someone there who's from the local mm -hmm. community, either lives on the lake or is a frequent user of the lake, a, an angler or a boater mm -hmm. that can say, you know, I care about this lake. This is my lake. You know, right. I really love it and I hope you'll help me protect it that goes a long way and they really have the pulse of that lake I mean there's only so many bodies of water that one can intimately know the hydrology the uh, all of the development all of the the fluxes that happen throughout the seasons on that lake mm -hmm. or river yeah, and I think what's exciting about our programs, and there's a few other localized programs around the state doing right. pressure washing or even some permanent boat wash mm -hmm. stations, and I think what's exciting about the momentum that the effort is building is that boaters are starting to get used to seeing us out. They know yes. who we are, yeah. they know that it's important, and communities are saying, maybe we need one of these units for ourselves to have it there all the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Joe, for bringing your passion and your uh, extensive knowledge of this issue to share with us today. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's been great uh, to come in and talk about this, and you know, I know we're both gearing up for, a, for an exciting and successful season. Mm -hmm. And thank you Nature Change viewers for joining us today.